Greetings from Snake Mountain Boat Works on Saturday, January 19, 2019. Big snowstorm coming, but today I have the pleasure of introducing you to a fellow who's going to join Snake Mountain Boat Works on a project specific basis. Uh, Keith Mitchell is a trained, educated, and experienced shipwright. And the first challenge we've given him is a 1911 18-foot Mullins steel launch. So with that, Keith, if you'd like to just walk in and take over and sure. talk to us a little bit about All the right. boat and you and... Yeah, so like you said, I uh, went to the Northwest School of Wooden Boat Building in Port Townsend, Washington. Trained there in uh, traditional large craft construction and repair. Uh, which is, it's mainly wooden boats, um, which this mainly is, <laughs> minus the, the outside skin, which is steel. Uh, the inside's built pretty much like a traditional boat of its day, 1811, um, solid wood bent frames, uh, traditional wooden keel. It's got a one cylinder, one lunger engine in it. Um, so it is a launch, not really for going super fast, but uh, it's a, got a very narrow beam and it has a very straight run out to its lines. So the uh, water lines and the buttock lines are all very straight, so it's sort of like a little arrow going through the water. It doesn't require a lot of uh, force to propel it, so the small engine should be just fine. That's what they designed it for. Um, it's built of panels of steel. So each panel, like there's a seam right here, I can just kind of see it ghosting through the finish um, or through the, the filler. Um, each panel is lapped and riveted, and then I, I understand they're either soldered or welded, but I guess solder, silver solder is what they were doing back then. Um, it was built by Mullins. Uh, they have a couple different names, Mullins Metal Boat Company and Mullins Steel Boat Company. There was a few different... Right. And they also made sheet metal companies. sections for automobile industry. For automobiles, for uh, kitchen cabinets, for all kinds of things. They were pressing, big presses, um, and apparently a lot of really skilled metal boat builders uh, in the area in uh, Salem, Ohio, I think. Yep. Yep. And uh, the owner wanted, wanted a boat of his own, so he probably put his guys on it, and then other people saw it, and they wanted them. So before you knew it, they were a big company. Um, the designer, uh, Whittlesey, I think his last name is, um, he designed some, a couple of destroyers, I think, and they weren't submarine chasers, but they were something like that uh, way back then when they were diesel subs, you know, that had to surface all the time. Yeah. And little boats could chase them everywhere. So he kind of had some military experience, trained at Bath Ironworks, went to naval architecture in Scotland. Um, I forget, University of Edinburgh maybe? Um, so he had a lot of, you know, knowledge in his designs. Uh, this is one of his designs. Um, Why don't you share with this a little bit? of the challenges I brought to you a couple of weeks ago when I delivered this thing. All right, so yeah, um, I'm not totally sure about the history of the boat. It's old, 1911, so it's made it over 100 years so far. Um, it has seen many dings and bumps and smashes against the dock over its years, so it, it was kind of dented. Um, I understand that there was a big keel repair done to it. Um, so by doing this keel repair and kind of stitching the hull back together. Um, it's been preserved, so it's not 100% original, but it's uh, pretty much back to its original form. Um, part of that with the welding, the new steel in, metal moves, um, things kind of tweak, and it's, it's pretty good, but there were some bumps and bruises that have, have been slowly filling in, um, fairing with a bat batons, but uh, a sort of find a dip fillet, you know, sand as much off of any high spots as I can, and uh, keep kind of smoothing this thing until it's uh, bare curves all around, so there's no dents or bumps, everything's just kind of a smooth transition. Um, yeah, you know, sort of in every direction, so there'd be a, it would be like a, a fair convex curve here, but also a fair convex curve here. 
and also a fair convex curve there. So you've got to sort of massage this whole thing in every different direction because um, there are some high spots and some low spots. So I'm kind of work it out. Uh, once I've got below the turn of the bilge, uh, you know, on a boat like this, it's kind of hard to say where that is, but everything that's in the water, more or less. Um, once I've got that sort of figured out, we'll flip it over and we'll start the woodwork. And the, uh, the gunnels were particularly challenging, right, in terms of getting the boat into the proper shape. Uh, yeah. I, I brought it up to Keith uh, sitting on sort of a, a rough strong back that John put together, uh, and he had started fairing, but when uh, Keith took some measurements, he discovered that the shear was not the same on one side as it was on the other. And yeah. That began the challenge. Right, yeah, so it was about, I think about three inches out um, from its original lines, which isn't super surprising. Um, you know, sometimes boat builders don't really stick to the numbers hard and fast anyway, so you never know if a boat has been built perfectly off the bat, but we want to try to get it back to its original, the way it was drawn, um, as much as possible. So I sort of uh, jacked this thing up off the cradle, so it was up off the shear, because it was sort of, um, the shear is very thin. It's only very, very thin steel. Um, I don't know what gauge it is, but it's, it's quite thin. Um, kind of like a, twice as thick as a Grumman canoe or something. So uh, it, it has give to it. So I built uh, body station molds inside of it. There's five station molds inside, which uh, I don't really have anything to show you, but it's a uh, you know, cut wood all sort of attached to, a, to themselves as a a slice of a loaf of bread, if you will. And there's one here, one here, one there, one there, one there. And then they're all attached to each other. Um, so I was able to sort of take the two sides of the boat, the center line, and kind of resolve everything back together. Because if you picture um, the boat's attached at the keel, I flipped it upside down now, that you could kind of, as you bent this this way, you could open up or you know or close this the shear, make it narrower, make it skinnier, um, sort of all over because it's sort of only open on one side. Um, so I kind of have worked that out, got it pretty close now, and uh, we're gonna finish fairing and prime uh, the lower part of the boat, flip it over, and we'll try to get the rest of the symmetry back. Because um, symmetry is pretty important, you know. I don't think any boat is totally symmetrical usually, but as close as we can get, and um, yeah, we want it all to look ship shape in Bristol fashion, like we like. So I've been kind of going around with uh, my long boards here. This kind of stuff. And I'll take, you know, this is a little skinny bat, and then I can kind of look at you know, the more delicate curves with and sort of you know, figure out if there's any high spots or low spots. And now I'll note them as I go, and I'll kind of go down the whole boat and just sort of find all these, see now these are great. These were two low spots with a high spot in the middle. And I sort of added fairing filter there, and now I can see that it's actually very, very good this way. Um, probably this way, but we don't totally know. Uh, it's pretty good. This this is a little tiny bit high right here. So you kind of go back and forth, sort of giving this boat the eye constantly. And uh, when you find a spot, you know, when you find uh, you find like a real high spot, like right here, you might start by kind of grinding it down a little bit and looking at it. Just because it was really good right here, I don't want to go driving into that with this big freight train here. So I'll kind of look at some of these spots just to see if it's, yeah, it's a little bit high right there. So if this is a little high here and that's really good there, I might leave this one alone for the moment because I'm going to keep sanding down the hull and I might find another high spot that corresponds to this high spot and maybe this, that makes this a low spot. So I'll kind of take uh, the long board where I'm kind of confident that I don't have just a mountain in one spot take this uh, sanding, it's just a sanding uh, block, big sanding block, 
you can kind of curve it and, and twist it, and you know, you get a good good handle on this thing. And then you're kind of um, you wouldn't want to really use it like this, right? Because this is sort of a what's that going to do for anybody? If you take it like this and use it like that. You can kind of actually you can feel it in your hand when you hit a bump or a dip. Um, so you kind of go diagonally one way, and work your way down, and then you go down. Sometimes you find that there's like a low spot here and a high spot right here, and then you might do a little of this. But if you do a lot of this, you might just wear a groove in a straight line. By spreading the paper out on an angle, you kind of work a whole piece of paper at once. Which is nice when you're trying to pair a big egg like this. Well, you don't have your Tyvek suit or your you no. have your respirator on now, so let's not do no, too much of that. No, I'm not making too much dust. I usually try to protect myself, uh, respirator, Tyvek suit, glasses, gloves, all that stuff. It's epoxy. Um, the jury's still out on epoxy. It's not really the best thing in the world for you, but it's still kind of young, so we don't really know what it does. So I try not to like breathe it or eat it or any of that kind of stuff. Well, this is a great introduction to the Mullins and to Keith Mitchell. We're so pleased to have Keith uh, having joined the State Mountain Boat Works satellite uh, facility, uh, which is his workshop, of course. Uh, Keith is going to keep going a little bit further than, than flip this boat. Uh, we basically have to fabricate a new all of the, uh, the the wooden interior and the owners have selected the more optioned level of uh, fit and finish that Mullins offered rather than the uh, let's say the the base model and uh, we'll keep doing updates as uh, Keith moves forward and we look forward to seeing the Mullins right side up for the first time well she's been with us for four years now, so it'll be the first time in about four years. Keith, thank you so much. Welcome to Snake Mountain Boatworks, and we'll be back again. Thank you. Excited to get started. With that, we'll say goodbye from Northern Vermont. Get off the roads before the snow flies, and thank you very much from Snake Mountain Boatworks.